Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Boss Wave, and welcome back to episode 4 of my Claptastic Voyage DLC Weapons Guides. And today I got a special uh, weapon for you guys. It's actually a unique glitch doll laser called the Heartful Splodger. And how you get this gun is pretty much a similar fashion that you would get the Excalibur or the Mork Shield that is also found in this DLC. So yeah, remember if you, I don't know if you watched my previous videos or not, but if you did watch my previous video on how to get the Mork Shield, I explained how there are three hidden chests that contain guaranteed loot, but they can only be opened once. This is one of those guns, uh, it's called the Heartful Splodger, like I said earlier, and we're going to go over the stats real quick. The damage is 9,440, the accuracy is 95.1%. Fire rate is 6.0, reload speed is 1.9 seconds, magazine size is 40, status effect damage per second is 7,265.7, status effect chance is 12.6%, and it always has a maximum chance of molly shot and loop glitches, but zero amp and overload. So you get an increased chance to get the green and yellow glitches, but not the red and blue. So that's the shotgun one and the, um, the one that makes you shoot really, really fast. So yeah, and also the special effect of this gun is that it's voiced by Pickle. So, pretty cool there, um, if, as long as you like Pickle, I can't stand him. Um, but anyway, and this gun also only comes in corrosive elements, so you can only get it in corrosive, not shock, ice, or anything like that. Only, uh, corrosive. And another cool thing about this gun is it's actually a Oliver Twist reference. I don't know if any of you guys take European history or not, but when I was in European history, watched a, a movie based on the book called Oliver Twist. It was written by Charles Dickens. And it's like a uh, European, like, like Charles Dickens apparently wrote the book to um, show the world, like, the horrors of, like, of the, um, I forget what they're called. They're like these orphanages, I guess, that these kids go to, and they're just treated so poorly, and they're given food with, like, roaches and shit in them, and it's nasty, nasty stuff. But anyway, the book's about this kid who was raised in one of those orphanages, gets adopted, but really, he's just like adopted to be like their worker, and he runs away, and ends up uh, with these like group of kids, and they kind of just like um, feed him and stuff like that. Um, they're owned by the, like this Jew guy, and he basically tells them to steal stuff from other people, and eventually they steal stuff from the guy who's actually related to. So Oliver is actually related to this guy that they steal from, and that in the meantime, that guy is trying to find out. Who Oliver is, but he doesn't realize that Oliver is related to him. And then eventually, uh, his like Oliver's like stepbrother realizes that um, that that's who he is and stuff like that. So he tries to kill him, but because he just wants to inherit all of um, his father's wealth, when really Oliver's supposed to get it. So that's how the story goes. It's kind of dumb, but it's like a British you know type thing where they try to expose all of the horrors back then of um, of the children's orphanages and stuff like that. But anyway, the reason why it's a reference is because there's a character named the Artful Dodger. He's like one of the um, kids there, and he like tries tries to uh, get Oliver to steal stuff. And yeah, anyway, so Artful Dodger, Artful Splodger, it's the same kind of thing. And it's, like I said, it's British, so um, not to sound really offensive or anything, but British people kind of sound like Australians. And then since it uh, was made by 2K Australia, I guess that everyone sounds Australian, so. Um, there's not really a huge difference there. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm American, so I don't really, I can't really tell the difference very much. I mean, I can tell a little bit of a difference, but honestly, like, when I hear a British guy and then I hear an Australian guy, it just sounds like, it sounds pretty similar to me. So, I think that's why they just went with Pickle's voice for it. So, it's kind of like, that's how it's a reference, I guess. Um, but yeah. How you get this gun? You just go to Overlook, and if you're seeing this gameplay right now, I'm killing all these bots. You want to go to the left side, and then there's going to be like a giant like gate thing in the very, very back. You want to go right next to it, there's going to be a ledge. You want to jump down, and then to the left, there's going to be some more ledges, and you just want to follow that down. There's going to be a red chest there. You open it up, and then there's going to be the gun inside. So, and the weapon will always um oh, excuse me, the weapon will always be. Um, corrosive, like I said, and then it will always match the level that you open the chest to. So if you're level 70 and you open the chest, then it's going to be a level 70 gun, obviously. You know, so on. You get what I'm saying here. And then, yeah, I wouldn't recommend this gun for any, just any build in general. It's a pretty good weapon in general, 
but as far as like who I what characters I'd recommend it for, I'd probably say Wilhelm out of all of them, simply because it is very you know laser damage. His build is very laser damage based, so um, and plus with that increased fire rate and everything, you know he's gonna be doing a lot of damage. I do use it here with my Athena, and doesn't do half bad because she, um, it is an elemental Athena build, but she's more based around shock and fire rather than corrosive. So um, if I'm using shock and fire, but then switch to a corrosive weapon, I'm gonna do a lot of damage. But if I um, start off with a corrosive weapon, I'm not gonna do a whole lot because my um, Maelstrom stacks won't uh, increase over time. So yeah. I'm going to let the gameplay roll here, but I want to talk to you guys real quick about my channel recently. Um, I just went on my channel and realized that I hit 600 subscribers, so I want to thank you guys so much. It's only been one week since I hit 500 subscribers, and you guys literally kept the sub train going and made me reach 600 subscribers in just one week, which is just amazing to me. I can't thank you guys enough for that. And really, like, I've been so busy lately because, like I said, it's my senior year and I'm trying to wrap up school and everything. And the fact that I'm like not uploading as frequently as I'd like to be and that you guys are still supporting my videos and watching them and stuff like that is just, it, it warms my heart, really does. And I do want to thank you guys so much for that. So, yeah. I'm going to let the gameplay roll here. My name is Boss Wave. Be sure to subscribe for more Borderlands content and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace, guys.